Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to our joint webinar between Xsense, Autobox, and ScaleFit. Uh, we appreciate you all joining us today. Uh, we're going to give everybody a few extra minutes to uh, get caught up, and we will get started um, uh, a few minutes after the hour. Um, looking forward to con connecting with you all, answering some questions, and telling you about what our companies uh, can do for you. All right, we'll talk to you in just a few minutes. About five after. Hopefully, everyone can hear me now. Um, I, we're going to get started today for the for the webinar. Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, we're going to have a webinar today, which will include Accents, Autobox, and uh, ScaleFit, and it's really the complete uh, ergonomic solution where we're going to show how you're able to not only measure uh, ergonomic variables, but also see them, visualize them in real time. And uh, Autobach will show their exoskeletons, which, which will actually help reduce injury. And we'll see some before and after uh, recordings as well. I'm going to go ahead and start with a uh, short Xsense overview. And uh, this is, um, I'm just going to give a quick background um, about Xsense. Um, we've been the leading innovator in 3D motion tracking technology since 2000. Um, we own many different patents in the field of 3D motion uh, tracking. Xsense does make IMU sensors, and with our IMU sensors, you're able to get very accurate and full body um, motion tracking as well as full body kinematics. Uh, we have a global presence now in uh, just three continents. Uh, Xsense's headquarters is in Enschede in the Netherlands, which is in the uh, eastern part of the Netherlands. We have a U.S. office in L.A. I actually work out of uh, my home office in uh, Florida, in, in the South Florida area. We have two offices in China, in Shanghai and Hong Kong, and we have an office in India and Bangalore as well. Um, what, what that means for us or, or for our customers is that we have a global um, support chain where we have product specialists and people able to help with technical questions pretty much any time of day. Uh, besides that, we have a worldwide network of partners and distributors. We're 130 uh, person employees uh, growing, and now we've become part of the Movella group of uh, companies, um, and we're really fusing all into Movella, which I'll talk to you um, about now. Uh, Movella was formerly MCube, and MCube had uh, two, two companies that they owned, which is Xsense, and then more recently Conduct. We are now fused into one company, um, which we call Movella. And we will be able to have fusion of all three products or all three um, expertise of all three companies in uh, hopefully in the near future coming out into one um, new offerings and new technology fusions where we'll take the best out of all three and bring them. Accent is not going anywhere. Accent is still considered the gold standard in IMUs. And it will be Accent powered uh, by, by Movella. So this 130 uh, plus employees is actually much bigger if we're going to include everybody at this time. Um, we have a diverse customer base. Uh, besides our IMUs, we also make uh, sensors for autonomous vehicles. And besides the HMM, we are very big in 3D character animation, which uses our the same uh, IMUs for film, broadcast, video game, entertainment. Uh, I'm sure most uh, of you have seen a movie that has our stuff in it or played a game as well. Um, we work with uh, health and sports. Uh, which is really what we're going to talk about today, which is a big vertical of us. Um, like I said, we have full body motion capture systems and also development kits if you just want to use uh, our single IMUs. Uh, we're able to quantify the movements of our, of our users and uh, create at automated and custom reports as well, which we will talk about a little bit more. We're using over 500 universities, uh, hospitals, and companies worldwide in ergonomics, in uh, auto manufacturing, warehousing, as well as uh, ergonomic research, uh, sports science uh, from uh, professional level sports to uh, uh, high school level rehabilitation. Uh, in the rehabilitation and physical medicine field itself, um, heavily used in biomechanics and uh, biomedical research, and also to, to, you know, for immersive training, which would be um, VR training. Our system streams very well into a VR environment, 
And uh, more recently, I've seen it being used in the ergonomic field uh, combined with VR to uh, do um, virtual uh, workplace and virtual setup analysis of how someone would be in, a, in the workplace before it's even built off the ground and for training as well. Um, I'm going to let uh, Levi talk about our specific uh, motion capture a little bit more. Um, but we do have just very general, this is just a quick uh, overview of, of what our avatar looks like and how well we capture data. Um, our sensor fusion, all, I, all, all IMUs will contain these three uh, components, an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and magnetometer. What makes XSense uh, really considered the gold standard is the way we're able to fuse these three components together, and we're able to negate magnetic drift, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and the accuracy of our tools that we use to measure. Our, our uh, hardware is paired with our software. We have a few different software offerings. Um, our, soft, our software okay, does offer real-time kinematics. It gives you 25 joint angles and 23 body segments, and with each of those joint angle, with with each of those body segments, you offer orientation, acceleration, velocity, position, angular velocity, angular acceleration, as well as some sensor data as well. We're able to stream directly into Unity, Unreal, uh, Siemens, uh, using Siemens Jack, Siemens Process, MATLAB. We have code to bring our, our information into uh, C++ and C Sharp. Uh, we have Python coming out as well. Um, what's really interesting is, as well is uh, we have now a direct integration with EMGs. Um, so EMGs are either Delsys or Cometa EMGs. We're able to directly integrate with them and show that the data in sync with the rest of the uh, in sync with the rest of the um, information. Uh, we also uh, have some reports coming out, such as a rule report, a gate report, range of motion, some custom reports. Um, Lila is going to get into a little bit more depth of them. And let me just move on there. Um, just hey, Ori, sorry about that. Let me um, let me just jump in really quick. So we had an issue with the screen share. Um, okay, sorry about my screen. The no, that, that's is not, is not uh, cooperating with me today. So that's okay. Uh, why don't Why don't I jump in and I can uh, pick up from uh, where you left off? Yeah, thank Thank you very much, Lila. And again, everyone, thank you so much for your patience. I'm sorry uh, for this little technical issue, but um, any questions that are that wasn't clear, you could ask at the end. And I have a feeling Levi is going to come in and uh, be able to expand on a lot of the stuff I was saying. All right, thank you, Ari. Give me just a sec, folks. I'm going to get this shared. All right, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Uh, if you can't, just feel free to send a message in the chat. Uh, again, my name is Levi. I'm an account executive with uh, Excellence Movella covering, uh, working opposite of Ari, covering the West Coast and uh, based in Los Angeles at our um, US office. Um, yeah, as Ari mentioned, I'm gonna kind of get into what is Excellence and what we do. Um, and so kind of our really big bread and butter for uh, Excellence is gonna be our motion capture platform. We utilize um, uh, motion sensors in order to do what's called inertial motion capture. So with our system, we utilize uh, inertial motion capture, uh, sorry, inertial measurement units to do motion capture. And that allows us to truly work anywhere. So you're not set up with any cameras or any wires. This allows us to actually work in factories, out in the field or in a lab, really no limitations to where you can work. In the video you're seeing on the screen here, you're actually seeing um, what would be your real-time feed of the data that you get um, while you're in our system. Uh, that orange dot you see moving out in front of the avatar, that's going to be their center of mass, which is just one of the um, many uh, numbers that we uh, measure with our system. And I'll dive a little bit more into those in just a bit. We use a biomechanical model that's been validated by uh, the ISP and in uh, multiple uh, publications. And the model is actually going to be applied in uh, real time. And that actually allows you to see your, uh, sorry, it's going to be applied automatically. And that's going to allow you to see your data in real time. So that's how you're able to see the center of mass, your joint angles, your accelerations, your velocities, and so on. 
We use advanced scaling metrics, so we're able to take in up to 11 different body dimensions to make sure your, uh, your avatar is scaled to the actual size of the user. So these are measurements like leg length, arm length, uh, shoulder width, shoulder height, uh, and uh, many more. This is so you, uh, because not everybody scales the same, and so you may have individuals with longer legs, longer arms, or shorter legs, or shorter arms, and making sure that the model fits what they're doing. Our calibration procedure is uh, simple and quick. It's really a combination of uh, a neutral pose followed by a short walk. And what you're doing here is you're setting your baselines. You're saying what is zero, 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 and you're enabling the environment. Uh, and what I mean by that is you're accounting for any magnetic distortions you may have in the environment. This can be really big in ergonomics when you want to test out, uh, test in the field or actually in your factory where you may have all kinds of uh, metal distortions in the environment in addition to some of the metal you may find in, um, in an exoskeleton. Um, the last part I want to mention is our MVN sensor fusion engine. This is really what makes XSense stand out, as uh, Ari mentioned. This is how we get our mag magnetic immunity. And what that is, is reading the, again, the magnetic field in the environment, so you don't have any distortion to the IMU sensors. We're able to generate multiple contact points. So if you have somebody uh, bending over, maybe putting that hand on the ground, or um, going on all fours to crawl under something to fix it. You can see those motions without seeing a significant drift in your avatar. We're able to cope with skin artifact for individuals uh, who may have um, excess soft tissue or excess moving of the sensors. All that gets filtered out so you don't have any jitteriness of your model. We're able to track 3D position in space and we're able to improve that even further with uh, our HTC Vive integration. All this really feeding into our ability to give you consistent, accurate, and reliable data that you need in order to evaluate what your uh, employees are doing in order to help them move better and create that safer work environment. And so this is a look at that kind of the base of that sensor fusion algorithm. Uh, all of our IMUs are going to contain the same three main components, and that's an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. The accelerometer measuring acceleration, the gyroscope measuring orientation, and the magnetometer helping give the gyroscope its heading and its um, uh, orientation based on the magnetic north of the environment. Excuse me. Um, the reason why our ability to compensate for magnetic distortion is so important is if you are somewhere with a strong magnetic field, of course, that is going to throw off the magnetometer. So we're able to read that uh, magnetic field and use it to offset anything that could be affecting our magnetometer. All this data is coordinated and fused together, and that's what's building our real-time avatar. And our sensor fusion technology really is what makes XSense stand out compared to any other inertial motion capture solution. So we talked about the hardware side of things, and I just briefly want to mention the software side of things. Uh, our MVN software is going to be where the models go, where you're actually going to see that feedback of your data. You'll see our validated real-time metrics is extremely uh, robust. For your center of mass, you're getting position, velocity, and uh, acceleration. You're getting joint angles from 25 different joints of the body. So think of elbow flexion extension, shoulder abduction, shoulder flexion, hip abduction, hip flexion, and so on. Um, so we're measuring 25 different joints of the body in all three planes of motion. We're also measuring data from 23 different segments, and you're, giving, uh, you're getting orientation data for that segment the acceleration, velocity, and position for that segment, all based on the model frame of reference. And then even deeper, if you want to go deeper into that, we can give you data from the sensor frame of reference as well. So you have that baseline for what the sensor is seeing versus what the model is seeing. We have live streaming capabilities, and this allows us to actually take the data, all this data that I mentioned from our software, and live stream it into another platform like Scalefit, for example, or for any software that can take in our real-time uh, data feed from a UDP signal. So everything I mentioned previously, all is able to stream into another platform. We've uh, started to integrate third-party hardwares in order to kind of expand what you can measure. Right now, we have finger tracking, which you can see in the avatar, and sorry, in this image uh, towards the bottom of the screen, where you're actually able to see the full movement of the individual digits, as well as EMG uh, tracking. And for those who are unfamiliar, EMG is electromyography, and that measures the muscle activation signal. So if you really want a really deep look into what your employee is doing, you're able to actually see not only what movements they're doing, but what muscles are being activated. And that way you can also 
uh, intervene if you see them maybe not utilizing um, the right protocols for lifting. Um, last part I want to touch on here is our automated reporting. Right now we have uh, a small suite of reports that are available. These are reports that are generated strictly from the data you report in MVN. And what that means is you're loading this MVN file into our report platform we call Motion Cloud, and it's automatically going to be generating a report for you. And so some of the reports that we have available right now is uh, the RULO report, which is going to be a rapid upper limb assessment. So great for ergonomic evaluations, particularly for looking at overhead tasks. You can get a, uh, a score assessing the risk of the task that you uh, just performed. We also have uh, gait reporting, so for walking gait, as well as what we call our agility report, which is going to be range of motion and asymmetry testing. So you can see how the body's moving in comparison to itself. Very briefly, I want to touch on uh, inertial versus optical motion capture. For those of you who are familiar, optical motion capture is one of the more original ways that motion capture is done. That uses those reflective markers and a series of cameras in order to capture those motions. While optical motion capture works great, there are some limitations to it, particularly compared to inertial motion capture. One of the biggest one is going to be the amount of required hardware. With the XSense system, you're utilizing 17 sensors. You can get set up relatively quickly versus 25 to 50 markers with an optical uh, motion capture set, which can take quite a bit of time to set up. And as you can see here, our setup time is going to take 10 to 15 minutes, really depending on um, the, the person setting them up, versus anywhere from 45 minutes up to an hour and a half, sometimes longer for an optical motion capture setup. Another really big uh, benefit for inertial motion capture is going to be our real-time data feed, so seeing that center of mass and seeing all that data. So you can actually give corrective um, uh, you can correct the motions that are happening in real time, as opposed to having to rely on post-processing and taking a look at the data afterwards, and then intervening only after the motions have been recorded. Uh, and lastly, and for ergonomics, this is huge, is portability. Uh, we can work indoor, outdoor, in, your, in the factories, in a lab, um, in your home. It really doesn't matter, uh, particularly with our ability to compensate for those magnetic fields. We're able to work in any environment. Uh, versus with optical motion capture, some of the one of the bigger challenges is that you are going to be in a relatively fixed location, or you're going to be for, uh, moving cameras and needing a large series of wires to uh, to connect in another environment. And so, very briefly, you may be asking why to incorporate motion capture into what you're doing. Um, these are uh, just a few a few figures for, uh, to think about. Workplace injuries are costing employers over $170 billion every year, uh, with over 105 million lost work days every year. Um, and 31% of uh, those workplace injuries are due from overexertion and bad body position. And what that really translates to is that those injuries are avoidable. Uh, some injuries you can't avoid, some accidents happen, but these are happening from um, doing things the wrong way. That means these injuries are avoidable. Um, and what does this mean to you? Well, employers who prioritize safety reduce their workers' compensation costs by uh, about 25% per year. It allows you to recruit more employees and retain your employees better because when your employees know you care about them, they're going to want to stay and they're going to want to work for you. Uh, and of course, public image is everything. It really creates a positive image that you're utilizing the best technology in the field in order to help your uh, employees. And that's something Ashley and Frank are going to talk about as well because their solutions really help enhance what accents can offer. Very briefly, just a look at some of the other expanded ergonomic applications. Um, so what motion capture is, is it's a tool to quantify your movement. And what it allows you to do is enhance your design tools as well. Using our streaming technology, you can stream our data into uh, um, CAD design. So we are seeing in the video is somebody who's created a virtual work site and is able to have their um, their user tests it out without having to actually build it. So it saves you time, it saves you money, and allows you to uh, prevent injuries before they happen. And lastly, you have just a quick preview of our um, ergonomics roadmap. So uh, really it's centered around our reports and the reports that we offer. So the um, next one coming up is what's called the Revo report. So that's going to be rapid entire body assessment. Similar to the rule report, what that does is it scores the movement that you're doing uh, with a lower number indicating that this is a safe movement and a higher number indicating that this movement may be more dangerous. 
uh, we're also incorporating uh, a NIOSH, lift, the NIOSH lifting equation, uh, which is pretty standard really across the United States for how you want to evaluate um, the safety of a, a movement task. And the very exciting one uh, coming next year as well is going to be our adjustable ergonomics report. Uh, particularly for some larger organizations, they may have standards for how they want things to do, or sorry, how they want things done. This allows you to select what, um, sorry, this is going to allow you to select what those parameters should be. Um, and uh, that's it for uh, the ergonomics roadmap. Um, one thing to think about, and maybe as uh, you see the presentations going on, is what else would you like to see on the XS platform? Um, you can throw it into the chat or you can ask it as a question. Um, but these are just a few things we're looking to incorporate. Um, I see I have a few questions. Um, I think we're running a little over, so I'll answer one, and then we'll save the rest for the end of the um, the end of the presentation. Uh, so, can you calculate NIOSH via your automated reporting? Well, I guess I may have answered that question uh, already. Uh, Luba, hopefully I said that correct. Um, so, yes, we will soon be able to calculate the NIOSH um, uh, movement assessment in um, in our reporting tools, and we expect that to be available. Uh, early to mid next year. Um, so with that, I'm going to stop presenting. And next up, we have uh, Frank, you're going next, correct? All right. So Frank from ScaleFit is going to be presenting next. Um, yeah, take it away, Frank. Uh, thank you, Lilai. Um, can you already see my presentation? In presentation mode, I hope. Yeah, okay. Yes, I, yes thanks. <laughs> yeah, and uh, as it's about 5.30 p.m. in Cologne, um, good afternoon from Cologne. Uh, so in the next couple of minutes, 20, 25 minutes, I want you to I want to introduce you to mocap-based visualization of physical workload and exoskeleton support. <clears throat> in, uh, in medicine and sports, imaging methods are standard since decades and widely used for analyzing physical stress. For example, in the treatment of musculoskeletal disorders. Sorry, I have a screen open. Um, disorders or to increase performance in, in top athletes. The question that arises is why we don't use why we don't um, why we don't use such digital health methods in occupational safety and health and ergonomics. Although we see that analog methods such as checklists, for example. Hardly uh, only little contribute to a reduction to a to a reduction of work-related musculoskeletal disorders. Those disorders uh, remain the leading cause of lost days and high costs. And we know that many workers are affected, as well as the number of complaints will increase with age. The good thing about it is, however, that musculoskeletal, uh, musculoskeletal disorders can be prevented if you know their cause. To achieve this, we have developed a mocap based measuring system that can visualize, analyze, and evaluate physical stress directly at the workplace and in real time. We call this system industrial athlete. The main goals of our industrial athletes are detect hidden health risks, visualize physical workload, and prevent musculoskeletal disorders. So how does the system work and what's the principle behind? So first of all, we have, um, we are facing more workload like forced awkward postures, for example, or high repetition rates or great body forces, which have, of course, an influence on biomechanical or biological tissue, such as the spine, for example. Then mocap comes into game, into the play, um, delivering us all necessary motion and posture data that we need to feed our software with. And finally, 
there are international standards and norms, for example, of the German industry norming and also NIOSH norms that help us to assess those motions and forces and torques that are acting on the employee, on the worker. <clears throat> so how does it look in, in real time? Um, so we have the, the workload acting on the employee. In this case, it's um, a supermarket employee, and uh, you, can, you can see that there is some strenuous work to do. Um, she has to bend over, she has to uh, lift objects, she has to fill the storage and, and so on. Um, uh, but to assess uh, the load, we have to get all the information about her position and her motion. This is delivered by the motion capture system of Xsense. As you can see with the orange boxes, for example, on, on the shoulders. And then we transfer all this data into load parameters. We call it load boxes. And the two of them can be seen here. Um, it's the trunk inclina inclination and lumbar spine compression. And um, yeah, in, in, in real time, we have a first assessment on um, the, the load that is acting on the employee for this body region. And the parameter construction itself is uh, that you can see a symbol that is moving. In this case, it's the upper, the, the upper part, the torso, the trunk, um, that gives us an idea of which parameter is, um, is shown. And we usually use a traffic light scheme according to the German social accident insurance, which covers 50 million people in Germany. So it's a widely used system. Um, green, of course, stands for um, very low um, physical load, yellow and red for higher loads. And red means it's uh, way too much and has to be reduced. In the lower left corner of each parameter box, you can see the actual value of each parameter. So right now it's about more, it was 70 degrees bending forward. And in, in the upper right corner, you usually have um, the real time assessment. So in this case, we have the number and the duration of being in the yellow and red risk zone. So it's now four times in those zones and about 14 seconds, five times. Um, this real-time assessment can be switched to also um, only red risk zone, only yellow risk zone, or mixture in between. So um, we can we can have an influence on on what is shown uh, in real time. In the lower right corner, you can see the lumbar disc compression, which is kind of our gold, one most important parameter. There's um, a bike biomechanical model behind, which was developed in the German Sports University, where I'm um, still working as a lecturer for uh, ergonomics. And um, the number spine compression is calculated regarding the height and weight of the employee. And with those data, it, it calculates all necessary information, like the weight of the hands, upper, lower arms, head, trunk, and so on, that have an influence uh, on this spe uh, specific parameter. Of course, we have more than two parameters that we are uh, visualizing. Some more can be seen here. It's uh, it's still a choice of all, all parameters that we that we offer in our software. Now it's it's about 22 parameters. Uh, you can see about 10 right now, and um, um, you can see also that we cover uh, a lot of body regions. Um, the ones on, on the left side, uh, I explained before, and on the right side, uh, you can see that, for example, um, the the head um, motion is or can be identified in two planes: in the sagittal plane, which is the flexion and, and extension; in the uh, horizontal plane with torsion of the head. Um, below, it's the arm elevation, so lifting up. Uh, your arms in the jo shoulder joint. Then we have a forearm rotation, which is a very interesting parameter in ergonomics because uh, the forearm rotation is used um, to 
uh, give the hand the right position, of the right posture to grab objects, to uh, operate uh, machines, for example, and therefore it's very important to build, for example, ergonomic um, grips and holds um, to, to work in a, in a, neutral, um, in a neutral condition. The last one is knee flexion. Uh, in this case, um, supermarket, it's, uh, you can see it's quite important to get an, also an information about this because bending uh, and, and working in a knee position uh, often occurs. So we should really assess this too. The outcome of um, all the results, of course, should be not only numbers, but um, to develop or to derive optimization measures. And um, of course, um, we, we can't only see the data in real time, but we can also export it to a report. And the report gives us much more information than we can see in real time. I uh, will show you a report later on. And from the results, we can easily um, develop measures, um, optimizations, for example, to prevent from, from knee injuries, like we can see below, or from, from severe spine injuries because of high load rates in this uh, specific body regions. So we're not only facing two body regions, but we are facing six of them, head, spine, elbow, hand, shoulder, and knee. And um, also we are facing not only one um, load type, but um, three different load types. Um, so our system covers um, the influence of forces or moments or torques, um, the influence of forced postures or awkward postures, and repetitions. And this is, um, I would say, found quite seldom because um, typical assessment methods um, usually concentrate on, on one of these three types of loads. Mostly it's, it's forced postures. Uh, but they are not taking into account the other tools. And this is quite important to get all the information because um, usually in, 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 in workload assessment, you can find a combination of those different load types. So there's a need to, to, to know about all of them. <clears throat> um, we are using this um, in real time, for example, to um, to give a feedback on site, to um, offer the employees tools and helps that they can use directly to improve this in the situation. We can also use the data to train the people, for example, in lifting tasks and show them the result. They can see themselves on the screen directly, which, which is highly motivating or in situations where we can't change the geometry, for example, or improve with tools, we train them with micro trainings um, to prevent wear and tear of muscles, tendons. And we, yeah, we uh, put on little stickers saying, do you have pain on joints and tendons? Then for example, stretch, stretch them three times a day. So reminder stickers um, that they uh, that they're facing or looking at several times a day and uh, yeah, keep in mind um, what we said is, uh, is healthy for them. <clears throat> As I said before, we are not, um, but the, the main goal of course, or the most important thing of the software is that we um, offering all results in real time and dynamically, but we also export the data to a report. And the report is um, divided in, in three different sections. The first section is the, the circle in the middle of, of the slide. It's what we call the load map. In the load map, um, you can again find the six different body regions I was talking about before, as well as um, these three different load types for every body region. So if you uh, look at the low back, for example. It's um, you can see that it's a, it's a, it's a, it's marked in green for forced post forced postures. 
yellow for the influence of forces, which in, in this case is lumbar spine compression, and a high risk because of repetitions. So probably in this task, the, the employee, the worker has uh, to bend forward um, lots of times during the recorded, uh, during the recording. So the load net gives you a, a fast overview of what's going on in this task, but it's, it's, um, it's, it's not more than an overview because for example, it doesn't separate between left and right side. So um, elbow, hand, knees are calculated as one <clears throat> um, to show you quickly where the problems occur. If you want to know it in more detail, um, the, the next step or next level of the report would be interesting because it shows details of each of the 22 parameters. And showing one trunk inclination, for example, um, yeah, it offers you a lot of more information, starting on the left with, the, of course, the, uh, the symbol uh, that you can, uh, that, that the reader knows what we are talking about. Um, then we have the um, signal in a diagram, signal over time shown in the diagram. This was a short recording, only 25 seconds. So, um, but of course you can record as, as long as the sensors last. Um, then we have the um, time in the different risk zones, um, green, yellow, red in minutes and seconds. Um, the percentage distribution of the uh, of the time in the different risk zones. We have a frequency like 2.4 times in the red zone. We have a maximum value for this parameter and we have the number in the different risk zones. So quite a lot of information which is useful if you really want to identify um, the specific kind of load which is acting on the specific body region. <clears throat> Um, one more information is um, about the distance and the trace. The, the, the worker has to, to, to walk, um, which is a ni nice site information. Um, with this diagram, we can see, for example, if there's an, if there's an obstacle um, in, in, in the field of work that you have to walk around um, several times. Is there a need to walk long distances, for example, to, um, to get a new tool, to get um, goods that you can also store closer to the field of action and things like that. So uh, we get out, give out the distance and we show the trace of um, the employee during the recorded time. <clears throat> Um, we already had heard some some information about the technology behind. We are using Xsense uh, sensors. We also heard that they are uh, that it's an easy setup; just takes 15 minutes. So very very fast um, to put on the worker before you can uh, start doing your analysis. Um, What's interesting is uh, or to, to mention is that it's wearable over or under the workwear or the PPE. So if there's a need to wear a helmet, for example, or gloves, like, like in this picture, you can put the sensors below. Um, it doesn't bother them. The signal is still good. Um, so um, and the antenna or the computer has to be or can be around 10 meters or we are in feet, 30 feet away, uh, which is fine. Um, you can't obviously use it underwater, but usual working places are not underwater. Uh, the rest is very good to manage. So you can uh, use it also uh, in, in field situation, outdoors, if you, if you, if you need to, um, for scientific, use it you can of course um, use it in the lab and in the field um, with no need to rearrange any environment and they have an autonomous power supply and it runs on battery which lasts uh, a long time six to seven hours which is our experience so um, fair, fair enough to record um, for longer times if, if you want to.
Um, the sensors also um, help us to um, detect hidden, hidden health risks in difficult analytical conditions, such as if you have to wear protective clothing, if there's insufficient uh, illumination or restricted conditions. Um, in this case, for example, um, the, the worker stood in, in eight meters, in, which is 25 feet more or less height on a, on a, on a lifting device. Um, and he had to, um, to, to, to uh, what is an English word for it? Um, it's, it's, it's a grinding, I think it's called grinding. Um, and a lot of sparks are flying around, so there's no chance for, for us as the inspector to be close to it. But um, as I said before, it it's, it's, uh, it's runs pretty good, even if you're 50 feet away. Um, and you can also um, add uh, a webcam or a GoPro cam, which gives you the, the, the video picture online too. Uh, to <clears throat> to identify all the risks, even if you are not close by. <clears throat> so, how does a typical project look like if we do the ergonomics analysis on site at the workplace? Uh, of course, the first step is always to apply and calibrate the um, the mocap system, which uh, takes about fifteen minutes. Then you're ready to go. <clears throat> then we record the activities and um, as we have all data available just after we press the stop button of the recording we can give a direct feedback um, to the employee um, discuss with them how how to probably optimize the situation um, which kind of loads uh, could be identified and how to improve the situation and, and things like that. Um, what we also export is um, a full HD um, MP4 video, which is directly available too, um, which makes it quite easy to, um, to, to, to give a feedback point because the employee can see himself. Um, and if you add also um, um, a, a video camera, it's, it's not only the avatar that you can see and the parameters, but also himself, which is very motivating and um, is, is, is a very good chance um, to, um, for, for us as the inspector um, to, to show them all the problems and to convince them to change things. So we sensitize the employee for healthy work. <clears throat> um, although we give out or could give out the reports in, in, in real time, we develop optimization measures, which usually takes uh, two to three days for six to eight activities that we recorded on one day. So the whole project um, takes about three to four days and covers um, up to eight, ten activities that we can um, record and analyze. Uh, on site. Project or oh, economics analysis is not the only um, um, service we offer. We also we also sell our system. And therefore we have two packages. One package is the complete measuring system. It covers uh, the the Xsense motion capture as well as our software package. And a second system, second package is um, is the software itself, and can be used um, uh, for 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 companies, for uh, institutes, for people that already own an Xsense system. So our software is an add-on, which is um, very easy to combine or to um, connect to Xsense. Um, it's our software is installation free, and in Xsense, you all will only have to um, to, inst to to activate the streaming protocol, which takes ten seconds, and then you're ready to go. And all the data, either it's from database or live, is automatically streamed to our software and can be analyzed there. 
<clears throat> our system is used um, or is, is bought mainly from research institutes, which are underlined in uh, this uh, orange uh, line. Um, and companies usually take uh, our system as a service from us. So we visit them, do the economic analysis, and provide them with, um, with the results and optimization measures. We are active in a, in a wide range of, of branches, um, as you can see here. Um, so as, as, as soon as there is uh, a need for physical work, our system can be used. <clears throat> um, in the last couple of months, and, and quite and, and for us, a new branch came in, and, um, and lots of companies now want us to um, to, to visit and do the, the analysis on site in the, in the branch of logistics. Um, and we didn't expect that because for us, logistics would, was always an automatic situation and very low um, physical work, um, maybe only controlling and, and uh, of, of monitors and stuff. But we found out that, um, yeah, at least at the end of the line, um, we, we have the worker working physically um, and therefore we have to um assess the working place for example uh, if, if tilted bins uh, work correctly if the height of the protest um, fits the individual in a in a, in a good way and, and and things like that so we can um, assess the working place and help to improve or to adapt to different um, persons uh, anthropometric data for example and a, a second, another field is coming up, which is product ergonomics. Um, and companies um, are using the system to show the ergonomic benefit of their products. And um, they, they wanted to explain how their products can reduce the physical stress from the employee, from, from the worker. And of course, with the with the um, with the software and the reports, you can um, generate meaningful results and convince your customers um, through our or through the scientific analysis given out by industrial Aslan. So summing it up, what are the chances, benefits, and and applications when using uh, such a, dig a, dig a digital health uh, system? It's ergonomic analysis, of course. This is still the biggest field in our um, workplace design. Then we have the physical risk assessment, which, at least in Germany and Europe, is uh, an employer's obligation to do once a year. And our method can be used as such a method. Then we have, um, we just talked about this a minute before, ergonomic product design and benchmarking studies. We can also use it for job um, evaluation during the planning phase. And I want to give you an example about this in our demo. And last not least, uh, the system, um, of course, can be used in, in workshops for behavioral prevention and healthy work to sensitize employees for healthy behavior. So what's the next steps um, of of course, our system is still in a development process and uh, we, are, we are adding new features, we're adding new parameters, and um, some of them is, um, are located, of course, in, in, in the field of augmented and virtual reality applications. So we already uh, finished a, a multi-sensory feedback, which, which gives you information uh, via vibration, sound or light. Um, on a on a smartwatch or on an um, external external device, um, we can stream the data to virtual displays, like like um, like to glasses or uh, shields that offer um, the display of of, of information um, and. 
future uh, in, in a couple of years is probably remote consulting. Which is um, already finished and can be used is the integration of CAD data, so data of uh, workstations. And this is what I meant before in analyzing workstations already in the planning phase. So if we get the um, the construct construction data of workplaces, we can implement it in, into our software, work on it virtually, um, and give the customer uh, information about the ergonomics on the workstation. We can analyze the stress that occurs on this workstation and therefore we can optimize or reconstruct it before it's finally built. Therefore, uh, of course, we can avoid costly conversion work. Example is coming up in the demo. Yeah, and last but not least, um, such a system can be used to um, biomechanically evaluate tools and, of course, exoskeletons. And um, with Autobock, we have um, yeah, a cooperation partner, um, which um, we um, integrated some of their exoskeletons. So in this case, you can see the uh, it's a, it's a, it's a older video, the, the newer video um, is, is also coming up in the demo, but you can also already see that we implemented the CAD data of an exoskeleton and also the, um, the values of support or efficiency of, of the exoskeleton. And in the corresponding parameters, which is in this case, the um, acting shoulder moment, um, you can also see that the uh, the scale is divided in, 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 in two. So the outer scale gives the information of the load acting on the shoulder without the exoskeleton. And the inner one, which is green by now, is the information uh, of what would um, act on the shoulder if you were such an exoskeleton. So it gives okay, you. Right. Sorry, sorry yes. to interrupt. Uh, just some jumping in a little bit. I, we're running a little bit over time, so I want to make sure we give uh, Ashley enough time to present. Um, yeah, I have, I have two more slides. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And um, how does it work? Uh, quite quickly, we still have the motion capture from from Xsense. Then we have the uh, CAD and support data from Autobock. Both are streamed to our software, Industrial Athlete. We can add a video and synchronize it to the avatar, add the load parameters, and also give um, the information of the amount of support um, that is acting when you wear such an exoskeleton. So we already added shoulder and trunk supporting exoskeletons. Um, Further ones uh, might come up, for example, the neck supporting one or the thumb supporting one. Some more development has to be done, but it's close by. <clears throat> and the rest of exos exoskeleton support we want to show you in our live demo. Thank you very much. Thanks, Frank. Um, and thank you. We did. Uh, I did see the questions that came in. Um, as I mentioned, we're running just a little bit over time for right now, so I'm going to save those questions for the Q and A at the end. Um, but now I'm going to turn it over to Ashley Stack from Autobot, and she's going to tell us a little bit about their um, uh, exoskeleton solution. Thank you. All right. Can you guys see my screen yet, or is it just us? Uh, I see the screen. Okay. Do you see my PowerPoint yet? Uh, yeah, I see the edit window. And so it looks like we're seeing the same window we saw before the uh, um, okay. presenter view. Huh, how weird. All right, well, I will go with it this way. Um, you're still seeing only presenting view? 
Yeah, but that's okay. We can still see it. Oops. My bad. My goodness. Or maybe try if you go back to the presenter view. Yeah. The display, display settings. And then, uh, it. yeah, that should work. There we go. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. I'm Ashley Stack. I'm, lo I'm located out of the Los Angeles area as well. Um, and there is six of us that actually support the entire country and other countries as well. But um, I've been with Autobach for six months and I have extensive experience in medical device and industrial as well. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a brief overview of who Autobach is and then go into detail on our uh, shoulder and back product. And then I will go ahead and um, cut out from my presentation and actually put them on so you can see how they're donned and off and how easy it is to get in and out of them. So on this screen right here, if you have enough bandwidth, you can see the gentleman in the middle doing a backflip. Um, now he's just doing that to show you the freedom of movement within the device still. Um, by no means is it an inherent feature of the device. You could do it prior to putting it on. So when it, you know, don't try it at home. Um, but welcome to the world of Paxo or Piaxo, however you wanna say it. What it simply stands for is personal assistive exoskeleton. And as you can see, we keep it simple in how we name our product. Um, it's Paxo and then the area of the body that it's supporting Paxo back, Paxo shoulder is what we'll be discussing today. So probably not many of you um, have heard of Autobach prior to this uh, webinar, this discussion, but we've been around for well over a hundred years and our mission is very simple. It's to help people maintain or regain their freedom of movement. And even 102 years later, we're still, you know, we still hold very true to that. So as you can see on the right, Mr. Autobach himself is fitting someone for a prosthetic leg. Uh, we started after World War I um, in prosthetics, so artificial limbs. And then we, you know, not well, shortly after that, we branched into orthotics and then wheelchairs and then also patient care that supports everything above. Um, and then as, as of 2012, we um, came into the bionic exoskeletons. So you're probably wondering how a medical technology company that, you know, is a world market leader on prosthetics and orthotics got into exoskeletons. So we are a German company and the Volkswagen came to us in 2012 and just, you know, kind of gave us, you know, what their biggest pain was. And that was people having a lot of shoulder and neck injury from repetitious movement of overhead work and um, asked us to make a device from scratch. So we thought it was a great idea. And it also allowed us, you know, we've been on the rehabilitation side of things for so long. It allowed us to branch into the, um, the proactive side of, you know, making sure we're, the preventative side to make sure that these injuries, you know, are reduced or don't occur at all. Um, so that's that in a nutshell. So really quickly, we're still a family owned company. We have over 8,000 employees. We're in, you know, 145 different countries um, and we're a very big company. So I always like to make that differentiation because um, that's, that's not normal to what an exoskeleton company is. We do have the medical technology to back it up and a lot of support of a big company. I'm not going to go over this slide in detail. Um, Lila already did a great job of, you know, letting you know what the cost of injury is in the workplace. And I think we're all well aware of it. It's something we definitely want to avoid. Um, so we we have, uh, you know, quickly after we made the shoulder product, we realized when we were getting into this, you know, into the ergonomic world a little bit more, that we need more than just the shoulder product. So quickly we started developing other products. We have thumb and wrist, Paxo neck. And then we also have Paxo back and then some accessories that you see down below that support them, some of the other devices. And then, of course, we're always working on new technology, upgrading new generations or making other other systems like you know, the knee, for example. So in this next slide, you see um, we've implemented exoskeletons in well over thousands of companies around the world. Um, a quick sample of the different uh, industries we've em employed them into is automotive, railway, aviation, shipyards, construction, and logistics. This is by no means limited to that. We literally add new use, you know, new industries and use cases by the day. Um, so it's very, it's very fun and exciting part to see that and where, you know, how many different places it can be used. So typically we get into these awkward postures or have repetitive motions when we're working on something bigger than us, um, whether it's a piece of equipment or an airplane or a train. Um, that's kind of why we kind of have to move our body around it. And 
You implement exoskeletons typically when everything else, you can't automate it, you can't add any lift assist or anything like that, and the only thing to do to protect the employee at that point is an exoskeleton. So really quickly, our Paxo shoulder is the most studied on the market, and it's also the lightest on the market. So it's um, been studied, I think we have over 13 studies now, and it's been shown to um, show relief of the shoulder and neck area by stress and the forces from repetitive motion and overhead work at 50%. Um, it's quick donning and docking, so it's a, a simple backpack type structure. So what it actually feels like when it's on is an empty backpack. It weighs less than four and a half pounds, and it is the lightest shoulder exoskeleton on the market. And it's biomechanically verified a one size fits all. One size fits most, I like to say, um, just because there, are, of course, is limits. If someone's, you know, close to seven foot, we might tap out at that that range. But um, I've not ever met anyone that we can't fit, so that's always, um, you know, something really cool. Um, so how it works basically is the weight of the arm is in this cuff right here, and in a small tool that's being carried in the hand is put through this arm cuff through these bars, and then it's bypassed through these expanders, which are highly engineered bungees. So it takes the weight of the arm and the small tool and it bypasses the shoulder and neck area and reinfuses that force and that pressure and the weight into the hip, belt, and area. The hip is the strongest bones so in that, that area of the body is meant to take more of that force than the soft tissues in the shoulder and neck. So that's simply how it works. There's a few areas of adjustment, much like a backpack, you have um, some straps uh, at the top and at the bottom that need to be um, you know, to each individual user. And then also the other two areas of adjustment will be right here for hip width. And then you see this little rod right here that is gonna be for length of torso. So the, how it works is it actually, the support starts to kick in at 30 degrees and full supports at chest height and above. So um, that's when you'll feel the, the support there. And it feels much like someone's kind of holding you and supporting you. Um, the, the good part about ours too, is when you get down to hands flat, or even below the 30 degree range, you're not gonna fight the device. Um, you can simply do as needed. So a lot of people will even take their breaks in it because it's just, it simply feels like a, 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 an empty backpack on you. And it still gives you the full range of movement like you saw in that initial video. Um, the gentleman was still able to do a backflip. Really quickly, I will go into back and then that way I can show you all the, the two devices at one time. So um, both the shoulder and the back have four areas to get into the device. So they both have a chest and they both have a hip belt. And then the back will have two leg cuffs that you see on the gentleman in the screen there. And then the shoulder will have one on each arm cuff. So four areas of entry for each device. Um, we pride ourselves on the quick donning and doffing on both, 20 seconds or less. And this device relieves the spine measurably um, without restricting movement. So same type of concept, um, you're still gonna feel the weight in your arms. So a lot of people will feel that, it's just simply when it's lifted, it's gonna bypass through these back bars here um, and bypass the lower back and put that weight and, um, the weight and force into the hip and leg area. Um, yeah, and that's how that works. It basically, it neutralizes, if you're lifting anything from 15, about 23 pounds, it's gonna neutralize 100% of that load off of the lower back. Um, if you're lifting around 35 pounds, it's going to neutralize 75% of that load off the back. And if you're lifting around 55 pounds, it's going to neutralize 50% of that off the lower back. And um, up next, you'll see it integrated with the software and with, um, you know, how, it, how it's saving and keeping um, employees out of the dangerous areas uh, for the NIOSH lifting environments. Um, it is a one size fits um, all as well. And really quickly, I know we've talked about the NIOSH lifting recommendation a lot. Here's a nice little um, picture of it that's really simple. Anything red, of course, is bad. You want to stay out of that. Yellow is still safe and green is excellent. So without further ado, can you guys see me now and not my PowerPoint? Right? We can see you. Okay, perfect. Now I will put this on. So much like a backpack, you're simply just gonna put it on. And then you have the hip belt. You wanna tighten this, make sure it's low and tight on the hips. The chest belt, this can be loose, this is just to keep it stable. And then simply you're gonna take, I always use the thumb opposite hand for the arm and it's magnetic here. So you're just gonna pull it out and then simply put your arm into here and then cup it. 
and then reverse that on the other side as well. As you can see, that's it, that's all it takes. Once it's on, you can see that it moves with me. It's not restricting my movement. I can put my hands down and that the support kicks in right about 30 degrees. Full support here. The device is fully supporting my arms at this point. And then of course, when you go up, it still has all the support. It's a low profile, which a lot of people like, um, and it's very quick to get in and out of, which keeps the employee acceptance rate really, really high. I'll let you see a little bit more in action. And that's it. And I, I will doff it quickly for you so you can see how quick this process is. The little closures are magnetic. So even a lot of employees that might have break time might put it in this resting position and leave the device on. And that is it. Now I will move on to the back device. And same thing, it's gonna be much like a backpack. Four areas of entry as well, chest, the hips. Same thing with this system as well. You want to make sure it's anchored low and tight on the hips as it's the anchor of the system. And then each leg cuff, you'll put green to green. We have color-coded indicators of what goes where. And now I am in the device. This is used a lot with any bending with lifting. So although this is a completely passive device, meaning no sensors, no power source, no batteries, no motors, there is a little smart feature, which is right here. So as you can see, I can click it on. And then from the user view, I can see if I'm on or off. I'll do that on both sides. And then there's a clutch system right here. So this green line right here indicates the level, the support at which my trunk is in, um, inclination is. So I'm gonna turn it all the way up on both sides. You lean back a little bit just to activate it. And now I have full support. So right now I'm fully leaning into the device. From here, it looks like someone's kind of holding me up from my shirt because it is. I'm fully resting in the device and I have full capability to squat all the way down and come all the way back up. Now there is counter pressure in my legs in this, in this mode, which we call static mode. And this is gonna help me when I'm bending from here, it kind of pushes me back up. So think about if you're sitting in a deep chair or couch, and you put your hands on your leg and you give yourself that push, that's what this device is doing. So it's taking the energy that's stored from when I lift and it's storing that energy and it's helping me get back up. This is what we call the static mode. So there is the counter pressure in the leg. So in this mode, you don't really want to be walking a lot. So there's another mode for that, which we call dynamic or walking mode. And it's one turn down, you can hear it click. And as I lean back, I just disengage my leg. So you can see from here, I have full range of movement. I can walk and then the support kicks in when I get to here. So the support's still there, but I don't have that counter pressure when I'm walking around. So this is what most of the time people stay in or depending on the job task um, or workflow, they kind of can rotate between the, the two. And that is it for now. I'll hand it back over, I believe, to Frank at this point. Thank you, Ashley. That was great. Um, I I know we saw a few more questions, but I want to get to this uh, demo presentation, and then we will jump into the Q and A after. So, Frank, uh, you should be able to present now. Yep. Thank you, Eli. Um, okay. Here we go. Um, Can you see the uh, Skyfit running, industrial athlete moving? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay, so um, we, as I said, we had implemented both the shoulder supporting one and the uh, back supporting one. I will at least start uh, as, as time is flying with the shoulder one. And um, obviously you can see a task performed by a, by a worker um, to explain, he has to to, to um, yeah, get some clothes from um, a delivering system, pack it, and put it in a box. 
and um, yeah, to to improve understanding, we can, like I said, implement CA data of the workstation. Now it's easier to understand. Uh, so he grabs the cloth from above, um, packs them into a box, puts a label on it from a label printer, and shifts everything to a conveyor belt to a roller belt. The lifting of the, the cloth is, is, is quite strenuous and has to be done um, around 600 times a day per shift. Um, so the idea was to support him with an exoskeleton and to show the if the support is um, has effects we can simply add the exoskeleton to the employee so it's it's virtually he does not have to wear um of course he can but we can show it even without the physical um device being attached to the body and as soon as we as we implement it in our software, um, we have the parameters um, which I showed before divided into um, two scales. One scale, um, the outer one, gives the information about the uh, load on the shoulder in this case without the exoskeleton, and the inner one when using the exoskeleton. <clears throat> we also see um, what we call the auto the auto box. Um, and the auto box gives us an information about the percentage of support. Um, and as you can see here, the highest support levels are achieved when the arms are elevated. I have to restart. Maybe I can switch it to automatically run. <clears throat> um, so we know the um, values of support that were given uh, to us from Autobock implemented in our software and as they are dependent on the um, shoulder angle um, we can see the dynamic behavior of such a support in the highest case um, it's about 70 to 80 percent of support so less stress acting on the shoulder joint and um, we can also um, simulate different settings of the exoskeleton. So um, in, in, for the shoulder supporting one, you can, uh, and Ashley, please um, correct me if I'm wrong, you can add a different number of expanders that increase or decrease the support of um, the shoulder exo. And the slider, which you can see right. in the auto box, um, the slider that you can see in the auto box gives us the opportunity to change the amount of support. So right now it's full supported, but we can also um, decrease it to like half of the support or a very low amount. And um, the, with, with this slider, we can simulate the different settings and see if it's necessary to put it um, or to, to adjust it in a, in a like in a full support situation or if half of the support is necessary um, and, and um, there with to, to find out about the um, usability and the effects of the different exoskeleton settings. <clears throat> in the software you can um, then identify the, the the workers task you can switch to different views um, you can also see for example the distances he's walking um, in the three four minutes I'm, I'm talking now he he or she moved like 50 meters which is 150 feet more or less uh, quite an amount if you extrapolate it to the whole shift. So this would be another idea to improve the work situation. Of course, it has nothing to, to do with the exoskeleton, but um, it's a side effect of um, the simulation of the ergonomic analysis. 
Okay, so that's that was a quick demo. Um, maybe Lili, we um, have now the opportunity to answer some some questions. There we go. Thank you, Frank. Uh, all right, let's dive into these questions. There it is. All right. Um, oops, let me pop that up. It's easier to read. So the first question from Daniel. Um, so could you please mention which are the German norms? I think he was referring to one of the uh, one of the um, uh, slides you had you had earlier on. The norms for I think the normal ranges of motion. Um, Daniel, if you're still in the chat, if you're still in the webinar, if you want to elaborate, um, it's uh, whose traffic light classifications are you using for the uh, for scale fit? Um, yeah, there's a whole there's a whole catalog of, of, of norms and standards that are used. Um, I, I don't want to go to in, in, into details, but um, of course we can deliver this brochure which shows all the standards. And as I said, it's um, it's the same standards as they are used from the German Social Accident Insurance, which is uh, um, the um, the institution that takes care or that covers 50 million employees in Germany. So it's it's um, it's it's norms and standards that are widely used and that we of course also use. We don't develop our own standards and norms. It would make no sense because we want to be uh, comparable to the, the biggest institution on on, on this market. Um, but either it can be found on uh, this brochure can be found on the homepage of the accident insurance, or we can send it. But I, I wouldn't go too deep into details right now. And um, maybe one uh, one other information: um, as we don't have any standards um, assessing the um, lumbar spine compression, we are using, for example, the NIOSH norm, the NIOSH standard, which is I think 3.4 kilonewtons acting on the lumbar spine. So this is the North American or the, yeah, I think it's North American standard that we are using. Um, so it's it's quite comparable to um, to the system in, in the US. Great, thank you, Frank. Uh, and hopefully everybody can see, um, I just uh, share my screen again so you can see everybody's contact information. Um, we have enough time, we should be able to answer all the questions in the chat. But if you have another question or you think of it later, you can see here how to contact myself or Ari for questions about Xsense, uh, Ashley for questions about Autobot, and Frank for questions about um, scale fit. Um, all right, the next question. Uh, really do quickly, you... there is a double A in my last name. So it's S-T-A-A-C-K in case anyone wanted, and it's at Autobot. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. No, no worries. It's uh, too early for me. I think this daylight savings got me messed up. Um, that's correct, right, Ashley? Is this still sharing? Yes, um, you just need to change at Autobach, not Mobella. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. All right, um, so the next question is, uh, do you use any pressure uh, sensor for, uh, insoles for better estimation of load over the body, or is an estimation uh, starting from kinematics and weight? Um, I can answer this for the XSEN side. Um, so we don't directly use any pressure insoles um, or directly use any force plates um, to create our avatar in, uh, in the MVN software. However, you can sync with uh, third-party hardware like a force plate or like um, any, any type of insole, uh, whether that be creating a hardware sync using uh, uh, the BNC cables and TTL pulses or even a post-processing sync using uh, time code. Um, Frank, I'm not sure if you guys intake anything for pressure insoles or force plates. No, um, we are using the biomechanical model of Tsatsiorsky, which describes the, um, the, the weight and um, inertial char characteristics of segments. So for example, uh, of the hand, forearm, upper arm, head, trunk, and so on. 
and um, so we know the uh, the different masses of the of the segments and we know the orientation or the position of the segments and therefore we can for each segment calculate the uh, corresponding torque that is acting on for example um, the lumbar spine or for the segments on of the arm on um, on, on, on the shoulder and that's how we calculate um, the biomechanical parameters. So we don't use force plates or pressure insults. Great, thank you, Frank. Uh, and so this next question, this is an XSense one. Uh, it says, has the kinematic output been validated since uh, 2019? Uh, referring to your presentation, HFDS, showing spine angles were inaccurate. So uh, I do know the presentation you're referring to. We actually worked with the, uh, the person who wrote that paper actually help improve the calculation of our spinal angles and our upper body angles. Um, part of that is the introduction into some of the advanced scaling metrics that we use. Um, and since then, we have more validation coming out showing the accuracy of our system. Um, and if you have any questions along that, please feel free to shoot me an email. You see my email on the screen here, hopefully. Uh, and I'm happy to send those papers over to you. And then last question, uh, yeah, I think it was just Daniel clarifying his earlier questions about the norms for the range of motion, but um, Frank addressed those. Um, are there uh, any other questions for, uh, for those of us still here? All right, that looks like all the questions. Again, if you can't think of a question uh, right now or you think of one later, please feel free to take down the, uh, the contact information on the screen. We're also going to be having this uh, webinar available very soon, probably later this week, on the Xsense webinar website, as well as Autobot will be hosting it, and I believe Scalefield will be hosting it on their website too. So you can go back and rewatch any of these presentations if you missed something or want to see something again. Um, we want to thank all of you guys again for um, for showing up and for your questions. Uh, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Frank and Ashley uh, and Scalefit and Autobot for teaming up with us so we can really show um, how employers can help their employees be healthier and safer at work. Um, we're, uh, we're all working a lot. We want to make sure we're healthy and safe and prevent uh, preventable injuries. Uh, thank you all again, and I will talk to all of you soon. Yeah, thank Have you very day. much, everybody. Bye-bye.